Yes, um, my name is Dr. Isona Gold. I'm the Executive Director, Stroke Chief Executive Officer of the Nigerian Institute for Web Arm Research. So, NIFO as an organization, there's a government organization, is an academic organization, and we will not go out of our way to sell information to people we know are not realistic. Globally, the only commercial variety of oil palm produced by all seed producers is the tenera. And tenera is a hybrid seed developed from a cross of Jura and Pisifera. Jura is a parent palm. Pisifera is a parent palm. So in our normal parlance, Jura is a mother palm. Pisifera is a father palm. So when you take pollens from uh, Pisifera and you cross it on the flowers of the Jura, it produces a bunch that you call tenera. So is that seed that is eventually uh, given out to farmers to plant and then they get tenera fruits? How this thing works? A dura fruit, for instance, how do you know them? Dura fruits, for instance, how do you know them? You identify them mainly by the mesocarp thickness and the thickness of the shell. When the mesocarp, when the mesocarp is thin and the shell is thick, you know that that particular fruit is a dura fruit. So, in the seed garden, where you produce seed, when you take pollens from the Pisifera and you cross it on the dura, the embryo of the dura is transformed. The shell is not transformed. The embryo is transformed to tenera. So when you plant that particular seed, that transformed embryo that is now tenera is what emerges as a tree from that particular seed. Some time ago, somebody bought uh, materials, planting materials from NIFO, our sprouted seed, and then went ahead to cut a transverse section of the sprouted seed and said that this is a dura, it's dura that they are selling. Uh, please come and return uh, these uh, materials. Incidentally, the man that was even, you know, uh, talking so ignorantly was a qualified uh, agronomist from the United States. Somebody uh, recruited him from the U.S. to help him start off his uh, oil palm farm in Nigeria thinking that, I mean, the knowledge about the oil palm is, a, is general knowledge that you can acquire anywhere in the world. That is not the truth. You know? So, we took time to explain to him that the transformation that takes place when you, when you are producing your seed for a tenera plantation it takes place within the embryo of the of the dura. So when you not take that dura that is properly cross-pollinated and then you take it out of one and plant it, it gives you a tenera tree. And that tenera tree is the same tenera that is produced by every oil palm, every oil palm seed producing company globally. So, just the same way as you have cola, cola drinks, cola beverage. Cola is a parent name of such beverages. You have such drinks produced by different companies and are branded according to the choice of the company. 
is the same way that Tenera oil palm is branded by different companies. However, the characteristics of the Tenera may slightly differ. So you can have a Tenera palm that is uh, and that is disease resistant. You know, what we call maybe fusarium wilt resistant. You know, it will be a product. High yield is taken, is taken for granted in all these planting materials. So you can also have another seed that is Ganoderma resistant. It's a different product. You have a tenera that is compact, as in the leaves, you know, are not so widespread like you have in others. So the spacing requirement for their cultivation is smaller than what you have in some others. So some others, you know, you can have nine by nine meter uh, triangular planting uh, spacing, whereas others you can have eight meters, some 7.8 meters, you know. So that can be a product of its own. You see, this is compact tenera. You know, and then recently uh, people have added uh, semiclonal materials. Semiclonal materials that, you know, the, uh, the mother palms of very uh, desirable characteristics are cloned by tissue culture, you know, and then they are now used in the seed garden to produce seeds for farmers. So you find that their output are almost like, you know, phototyping because they all behave exactly the same way. They carry the same uh, size and number of fruits. They have the same uh, uh, get sizes and the uh, tree heights, tree canopy, you know. So they present very beautiful architecture within the uh, plantation. And then you have tenera that are drought tolerant as a different material. So you go to seed companies, you find them having up to 10, 13 different kinds of planting materials. You know? Now, as opposed to these private sector companies that are mainly profit driven, therefore it's different. It's a government organization. A lot of the characteristics that these companies will separate out into 10 different products, we have it in about two, three products. You just like today you buy a particular brand of phone. You know, it has a very good, it has very good camera, you know, it has a fingerprint, it has some other, you know, facilities like that that uh, can make life comfortable for you. Whereas there are other brands of phone that keep releasing these technologies piece by piece into the different releases that they put into the market. You know, so that's what it is. So in NIFO, our materials are super packed. Super packed with desirable characteristics. And to ensure that there is no crop failure in our farmers' fields, you can't have NIFO materials and you say, oh, uh, they are all susceptible to a particular kind of disease that has wiped out everything. No. But the foreign materials that people plant these days, you find that they all have the same susceptibility, whether to drought or to disease, you know. So whatsoever hits one, hits everything that is in a thousand hectares or ten thousand hectares. So these are some of the things that we guide against in our own product development effort. Because we know our farmers are resource limited. They don't have, they cannot bear so much shock. That you come into your farm one morning and then you find that uh, there is no bunch in all your trees. You know, or you come into your farm one morning and find that they are all desiccated, everything. You know, you are not spared on anything at all. We know that these are things that make people to go commit suicide. 
especially when they are small farmers. Some of them invested their, their pension and gratuity to set up those farms. Others used their, you know, their windfall to set up the farm as a last resort. You know? So these are some of the things that we are doing for our Nigerian farmers. And it's unfortunate that what we don't appreciate in Nigeria, people outside the country appreciate it more. The Chinese government have been to Nigeria to assess NIFO and seek collaboration on the transfer of materials to their country. The Indonesians, the largest producer of palm oil in the world, they are approaching Nigeria to collect materials so they can withstand the climate crisis that they are predicting for 2050. So they are all over the world right now collecting materials. And the material from Ni of Ni for Nigeria, NIFO in particular, is one of the prime materials that we plan to, to, to use for hedging. So but here you find people, you know, disparaging, saying things that they don't understand about the industry at all. And a lot of these people, they run into problems.